Sí, profesor. Saida Professor Rupas. Dr. Palafas, hearty welcome to you for this webinar session, sir. Today's uh, speaker, Shrimati Lakshmi Murthy, Program Head of Medical Excel, Race Education Services Private Limited, Bangalore. Dr. Palafas, welcome to you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I also welcome all the participants to this webinar. Madam Mire be giving her third talk this series. Today she will be delivering a talk on diabetes. Or it will be for the few students, especially because it is one of the topics that they have. This background request Dr. Rashmi Muthi, Madam, for her talk. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So good evening, students. Please, uh, um, you know, note the topic for today. Ramesh, sir, uh, has kindly, um, you know, given us the topic for today, which is diabetes. So he has just um, uh, said that this is the topic that we are going to be dealing with today. Right. Uh, so a warm welcome to all the students. So as sir very clearly mentioned, is this topic relevant to PU students? Definitely. But apart from that, as students who are interested in biology, as students who are interested in career in healthcare, etc., you find that this topic is going to be very important. In case there are some students who want to make a career, let us say in the engineering stream also, you find that diabetes as a topic is relevant to all human beings. We will be going forward and I will be explaining to you about different types of diabetes. One particular diabetes which is called as type 2 diabetes, India is the capital of the world, right? And other in the sick Put a cost on the exchequer bilate. So somewhere this is a type that definitely is under our control and it is preventable. So other bagenu ivatu nao matar tv. So let's not delay at all and directly go into this topic, which is diabetes. When we look at the word diabetes, what does it actually mean? So it has got a very ancient uh, let us say origin, other etymology, illa origin of the word nodadre. Diabetes basically means where you can siphon off some fluid. Yaudaru and the fluid na siphon out madodu. Igani magotir bodu. Suppose you have a small little, uh, uh, you know, can of kerosene. You can use a small siphon in order to put that kerosene into another lamp. In the same way, diabetes, when you look at the word, it basically means siphoning. Why did this term come to a set of diseases? Because the most important symptom of a person suffering from this endocrine disease called as diabetes is going to be the production of large quantities of urine. So diabetes, when you extend the meaning of the word, it basically means the production of large quantities of urine. When we look at diabetes, what are we going to notice? So as I said, this is uh, this is going to be a word that is restricted to a certain set of endocrine disorders. Diabetes is going to be basically of two types. What are the two types of diabetes that we can see? The first type of diabetes that is seen is called as diabetes insipidus. What is this disease which is diabetes insipidus? So insipid andre tasteless. Tumba sappe irodake insipid dantivi. Okay, so the word insipid basically means something that is tasteless. So people from ancient times were familiar with the more popular name of diabetes or more popular disease which is diabetes mellitus. This was a disease that they were popular about or popular with where you find that mellitus means a word that refers to sweetness. Nivu, second PUC Maklu, you would have learnt about um, Apis mellifera, which is a type of a honeybee. 
So nimge melli, melles, anta, if you have a prefix, it means something that is sweet. So people who have diabetes mellitus, people were already familiar that their urine is going to be sweet. Compared to that, similar symptoms are seen in a person who has diabetes insipidus, but their urine is going to be tasteless. It does not have that sweetness. This particular disease is called as diabetes insipidus. So before we go to diabetes mellitus, which is going to be the uh, most important aspect of today's lecture, let us first look at diabetes insipidus and learn something about this. So diabetes insipidus is an endocrine disease that is characterized by low levels of. So the level of which hormone is going to be low? The level of a hormone which is low here is called as ADH. Let me explain about this particular hormone. The full form of ADH is anti-diuretic hormone. This is anti diuretic hormone. Where is it going to be manufactured? This is a hormone as the name itself suggests clearly. This hormone is going to be manufactured in a part of the forebrain called as hypothalamus. It is actually a neurohormone. But once it is made in the hypothalamus, this hormone is going to be sent. It's a small nanopeptide hormone. It's a small stretch of peptide, polypeptide, to machika polypeptide, nanopeptide and the LTV. So that hormone is going to be sent by the hypothalamus through axon terminal into an organ that is present just below the hypothalamus. If you look at hypothalamus, nano diabetes mellitus ke ulcertini. I'm going to come back to that later. So when you look at the hypothalamus in the brain, what you notice is let us say this is hypothalamus. Either male gade nimge egg shaped thalamus barate. So in hypothalamus, you will notice that there is going to be a small pea-sized organ present, which is called as the pituitary gland. This is going to be towards the ventral side of the body. That is, the person is facing that side. This is going to be towards the dorsal side of the body. That is towards the back side. So, hypothalamusally, you will have certain neurons present. Our neurons have their axons located within a gland which is present below the hypothalamus. This gland is called as the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland, all of you are familiar with class 11 early or first PUC Vodidira. Pituitary gland has got two main parts, which we call in common language as anterior pituitary or adenohypophysis and posterior pituitary, which is neurohypophysis. The neurons of the hypothalamus directly will move to the posterior pituitary, which is going to be neuro hypophysis. Neurohypophysis, which is the posterior pituitary, will receive the nanopeptides of this hormone called as ADH from the hypothalamus. They will store it within themselves for some time and will make small modifications to its structure. This ADH will be directly released to the bloodstream. Being a hormone, we know the gland is endocrine, so the, blood, the hormone is directly released into the bloodstream. So ADH manufactured in the hypothalamus, modified and released by neurohypophysis, which is the posterior pituitary. It is a peptide hormone, basically a small peptide that is antidiuretic hormone. Okay, now this antidiuretic hormone which is present, what is its function? Now we know that hormones have got some physiological functions, correct? So this hormone, what is its function? So ADH basically has got two functions of which we will look at the functions one by one. One of the functions of ADH, which is the most important functions of ADH is, ADH is going to act on the later parts of the, um, of the nephron system, or we call as the distal parts of the nephron. 
Yao do distal parts. Distal parts are whatever is far away from the uh, malphigian corpuscle is going to be called as the distal parts. Which are those distal parts? ADH will target one part which is called as the DCT. Children will be familiar. DCT is nothing but distal convoluted tubule. So it targets DCT along with that. It will target the collecting duct or collecting tubule, which is not part of a nephron, but is present in the distal areas. So these two will be targeted by ADH. What will ADH make these parts do? ADH is going to make these parts reabsorb more amount of NaCl and that will be followed by more absorption of water. So basically ADH will target the DCT and the collecting tubule and change the permeability of the tubules such that more NaCl as well as more water can be reabsorbed. Where is that water in NaCl going to be introduced into? That will go into the bloodstream after it passes through the tissue fluid. So basically, ADH is going to help in reabsorption of sodium chloride as well as water from the DCT and collecting tubule. What happens as a result of this? As, as a result of this, you find that the urine that is going to be produced is concentrated. Is the human body interested in the quality of the urine? More than that, the human body is interested in conserving water and NaCl. NaCl is a vital salt plus water. Definitely, we are all interested in conserving. So in order to conserve that water as well as NaCl, ADH is going to target these areas. Apart from that, what else does ADH do? ADH will also help in constricting blood vessels. Constricting Andreno, when blood vessels are made narrow, we call that as constricting of blood vessels. So it constricts of blood vessels. All of you students will be familiar that blood vessels capillaries in a bit betray veins zirbodu arteries zirbodu you know that they have a middle layer which is made up of smooth muscles so when you contract those smooth muscles you find that the vessel will become narrow when the vessel becomes narrow what happens is blood pressure increases when blood pressure increases you find that more amount of uh, filtrate will be av available to the dct and collecting tubule giving a chance for more reabsorption of sodium chloride and water so that is you are constricting the blood vessels which means you are basically helping to increase blood pressure when you increase blood pressure it gives more chance for reabsorbing more nacl and water please don't take it in the opposite manner that if blood pressure increases i will lose a lot of water through urine no it is only increasing the uh, it is increasing the ability to reabsorb more water in nacl so that is going to be your uh, adh which is going to work in this way because adh helps in constricting blood vessels that gives it its old name the old name of adh hormone was vasopressin Ivaglo e word use mad poduna wo illa antala vaso vessel pressin you are going to constrict vaso pressin was the word that was used for it so adh do e roles baratte if I send out large amounts of dilute urine, then the process of sending out large amounts of dilute urine is going to be called as diuresis. Diuresis andre, sending out large quantities of dilute urine. For example, there are some common diuretics that are available which are not illegal to use like tea, coffee etc they are all considered as diuretics nimadan consume madadre nimge large quantities of dilute urine you will make that's why they say that people who drink lots of tea and coffee they must also drink a lot of water otherwise they are going to be under the danger of dehydration correct diuresis this hormone is preventing diuresis it is not allowing dilute urine to be formed therefore we call it as anti diuretic hormone this is its role Ega, we will now come to this hormone. What if 
the hormone levels go down. So if the hormone levels go down, the amount of ADH produced, let us say, is going to be very less. You will find that this person is going to have the symptom that they make large quantities of dilute urine. So there will be large quantity of dilute urine produced by this person. Okay, so instead of one and a half liters of urine, or three liters or four liters or bodu, inno just the urine produce martare. That is di large quantities of dilute urine when ADH levels are low. That is hyposecretion of ADH adaga. Because of this, what happens is you find that the person is going to be forever thirsty. So, Yava Glue, you will have a high feeling of thirst. So, this is going to be Yava Glue thirsty feeling. Because they feel thirsty, they drink more water, but actually it will not help because that water also is going to be uh, sent out by the uh, by the uh, urinary system, that is the excretory system. So even drinking that amount of water is not going to relieve any thirst. What happens because of this? You find that the person is going to feel extremely tired. The person will have a lot of tiredness because they are losing so much of water. That is going to be diabetes insipidus. E symptoms of producing a lot of urine, having a lot of thirst was also seen in the other type of diabetes, which is diabetes mellitus. But when you, uh, you know, do a qualitative test on the urine, ethera person the urine na togondu niu check mardaga. You can conduct what is called as a Benedict's test or a Felling's test when you conduct on the urine. These are basically tests to find out the whether there is glucose present in a given uh, substance. You will realize that it comes negative for glucose, which means this urine will not have any glucose as such, and that's why that word diabetes insipidus is going to be used. Diabetes insipidus, you can detect it is so by checking the urine as well as doing a blood check to find out the standard level of ADH, whether it is maintained or it has gone low, then the person is going to be treated accordingly. So this was diabetes insipidus. Now let us go to our main uh, type of diabetes for today, which anybody says our diabetes ide and takshna, generally they do not mean diabetes insipidus. Instead, they will be meaning the other type of diabetes, which is going to be diabetes mellitus. So let us now go to diabetes mellitus. Right. Ivaga diabetes mellitus, what are the points that we need to uh, you know understand here? So diabetes mellitus alenagate. So in order to understand the disease, this is also an endocrine disorder itself. And in order to understand this disease, first what we'll do is we will try to go into an organ which is present just below your stomach. This is a heterocrine gland which is called as pancreas. So when you look at pancreas, suppose the pancreas na nodadri. So stomach kelgade. Let us say this is going to be the stomach which is going to move this way. Okay, into the duodenum. Just below the stomach, you will find the presence of a gland that is seen. It is a leaf-shaped gland which is going to be seen. Okay, so it's a leaf-shaped gland that is seen. This leaf-shaped gland, it's a heterocrine gland. Heterocrine gland, Andre, some tissues within the gland are exocrine and some tissues are going to be uh, endocrine. That is why it is called as a heterocrine gland. Some people also call it as a mixocrine gland, which is also okay. So this pancreas, when you take a section through the pancreas, you will find that pancreas has got two parts. Correct? Exocrine part is endocrine part. Is exocrine part of pancreas, which is called as the acinar cells, they are going to make pancreatic juice, which has got, you know, trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, pancreatic amylase. All those are going to be different types of uh, enzymes or proenzymes that are going to be seen in pancreatic juice. That is the 
exocrine part and that will enter through the pancreatic duct. It will enter into the duodenum for the sake of digestion. But now we are not interested in that part. We are interested in another part. When you take a section of the pancreas, you are going to notice that there are small little groups of cells which are embedded among the exocrine part of pancreas. So exocrine part of pancreas is uh, is well spread. And in that exocrine part, you will notice small little groups of cells which are going to be seen embedded in the exocrine part. Those small groups of cells which are located in the pancreas are called as islets of Langerhans. Islets and the small islands. So they looked like tiny islands in the exocrine part, named after the person who discovered it. Islets of Langerhans and the Antivi. Islets of Langerhans, which is present, it has got three different types of cells. What are the three different types of cells seen in islets of Langerhans? The first type of cells are called as alpha cells. Alpha cells are also endocrine. They make a hormone which is called as glucagon. And we are not interested in this hormone right now. Of course, it is also a hormone which is going to take care of carbohydrate metabolism. But this hormone, let us not worry right now. Alpha cells make a hormone called as glucagon. Next, you will find there are beta cells that are going to be seen. These are the cells that we are going to be interested in today. And beta cells make a hormone, a very well-known hormone, which is called as insulin. And then you are going to have the third type of cells which are present, which are the delta cells. And they are going to make another hormone called as somatostatin. Uh, please remember, hypothalamus also makes somatostatin. This is another somatostatin made. Okay, so three types of cells and each one makes a unique type of hormone. We are going to be interested in these cells and the hormones that they secrete, which is going to be insulin. Now, if, as I said, insulin is a hormone, so it is going to be released into the bloodstream. Correct. Now, what is the role that insulin has? So before we uh, understand the, uh, you know, the disorder with respect to insulin, it makes sense for us to know what is its role? Because role are thug, but disorder alone, correct. So let us look at the role of insulin. What does insulin do? So insulin basically is going going to be considered as a hypoglycemic hormone. Insulin is called as a hypoglycemic hormone. What does that mean? Hypoglycemic. Let us look at this. Insulin is called as a hypoglycemic hormone. What does it mean? Amic means anything with respect to blood. Anemia, thalassemia, leukemia. These are words that you know. Amia will refer to blood. Okay. Glyce will refer to glucose. When you see the word glyce, the term it means glucose. Hypoglycemic. So insulin reduces blood sugar level. How does it reduce blood sugar level? What does it do to blood? Very simple. So first, what does insulin do? Insulin is going to target the living cells of the body. What might be the living cells of the body? For example, think about the liver cells. Liver cells, I'm just giving you a few examples of living cells. You got to think about the liver cells. Liver cells are called as hepatocytes. So what does insulin do in this particular case? What insulin does is insulin will make sure that hepatocytes pick up a lot of glucose from the blood. Suppose I have eaten some potatoes or rice. A digest glucose blood. So insulin will make sure that this glucose enters into the liver cells, hepatocytes. Liver cells can use part of it to make their own ATP by cellular respiration and the remaining the liver cells will convert to glycogen in order to store it. So liver cells will take up glucose and they can use it for a variety of purposes. Same way, for example, let me think about adipocytes. 
Adipocytes are the cells of the adipose tissue. They will take up the glucose from the bloodstream and they are going to utilize some for ATP and the others they will convert through a pathway into your fats. Right? So that is something that they can do. Similarly, there are so many cells. Okay? You think about your squamous epithelial cells, cuboidal epithelial cells. Think about your neurons. So, yellow cells gunuwe glucose beke beko because you can't borrow ATP from a neighboring cell. You have to make your own energy currency that is ATP. Okay? So, therefore, all the cells will take up the glucose and they can use it for a variety of purposes. That is what insulin is doing. As a result, what happens is when insulin is trying to make cells take up glucose, naturally the level of glucose in the blood will come down. Therefore, insulin is called as a hypoglycemic hormone. So remember, insulin is helping to trigger a pathway so that your glucose is converted to glycogen. Glucose can be converted to fats. Glucose can be used for cellular respiration, etc. That is what insulin is doing. Now, very briefly, and I'm sure because many of the students who are here, they will be interested even in writing competitive exams. Alva, you CET bari bhodo, NEET bari bhodo, other exams bardaga. Definitely, there are application level questions which are asked, and plus it is also good because it is good knowledge also. Okay, bari competitive exams gain tane Allah. Even good knowledge. Yao tharagate. Let me briefly explain how insulin is going to do this. So insulin, remember, is not an enzyme that can help in converting glucose to glycogen. It is a hormone which is doing this. So how does it do this? For example, let us say idu vandu. Uh, cell lantan kolana. Okay, this is my living cell. That is the nucleus lantan kolana. This is a living cell which is going to be seen. So, e living cell ali, you will find that you will have the presence of two structures that are going to be located here on the living cell. So, ye ni do structures. So, please remember, I am drawing this only diagrammatically. Okay, the very diagrammatic representation, right? Actually, if structure known as variation, what are we going to find? So, on one hand, you will find the presence of a membrane protein. Okay, this membrane protein which is present is going to be called as the insulin receptor. Students who have uh, completed the first year PUC will know that peptide hormones which are present, they will have an extracellular receptor where the receptor is a membrane protein present on the cell membrane. Insulin is also a peptide. It's a protein. Insulin is a protein, correct? So that insulin, uh, there will be a receptor present on the membrane. That is what you will find here. Atakke attach agbitu, attach to this. I'm showing the attachment again diagrammatically, please. Ide thara structure irala. Attach to this, I'm going to find the presence of a transport molecule. E thara transport molecule na e thara baritini. Okay, this transport molecule which is attached to the insulin receptor is called as the GLUT4 protein. Okay, GLUT4 and there are many types of uh, glucose transporter proteins present. The one which is most relevant is the GLUT4. GLUT4 and do GLU stands for glucose, T stands for transporter, and it is the fourth one that was discovered. GLUT4 molecule is going to be present here. Now, when your insulin comes, let us say this is going to be insulin molecule. Okay, so that is insulin molecule. When insulin comes and binds to the insulin receptor, it is going to make or activate the GLUT4 transport molecule. As soon as the GLUT4 transport molecule is activated, you find that it opens up the channel so that glucose can be absorbed, right? PUC, Maklu, Khandita, don't think that GLUT4 is outside information and ta'ala. Idella nimdu textbooks alay de. GLUT4 is there in biomolecules chapter. Sarina, so insulin binding to the receptor is going to make sure that 
the GLUT4 transporter or molecule opens up and glucose, the green dot there is going to be glucose and glucose can be transported into the living cell. Once it is transported, then you can utilize the glucose for whatever purpose is required. That is how it is going to work. For example, Nimdu, if it is mammary gland cells, then this glucose can be utilized along with galactose to make lactose. So you will have an anabolic reaction there. So athara bere bere thardu purpose ke use maad bhodwa glucose na. Right? This is how it works. So insulin is basically making sure that glucose from the bloodstream enters into the living cell. That is the function of uh, insulin. Ega let us come to diabetes mellitus. So basically what is happening in diabetes mellitus, you find that you have a problem with this blood glucose level uh, maintenance is going to become a problem. Hangadre, what is this? Is this hyposecretion of insulin? In the diabetes mellitus. Let us try and understand. To understand diabetes mellitus, we will divide diabetes mellitus into two categories. Please remember, you can classify it on many bases. For example, a lot of pregnant women also can suffer from diabetes mellitus. It is called as gestational diabetes. Okay, I'm not going into those aspects. I'm going to go into basic classification of diabetes. So diabetes mellitus can be classified into two categories as what we have type 1 diabetes mellitus, which is called as IDDM. Type 1 diabetes mellitus is called as IDDM. What is this IDDM? Type 1 diabetes mellitus, IDDM means insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. It is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, right? Or we also call it as juvenile diabetes. Insulin dependent diabetes mellitus is also referred to as juvenile diabetes. Juvenile andre chikkoru anta, correct? Ha? So juvenile diabetes mellitus andre no. This means that this type of diabetes mellitus is going to appear early in life. Chikkor gene ban bidatte. Okay, so anivu tumba chikmaklu irbodu illa teenagers irbodu. You will find this disease is going to start showing its symptoms, right? That's why it is also called as juvenile diabetes. What is this particular diabetes? Let us understand and we'll also understand what is that name IDDM anta. Juvenile diabetes, I have told you. Bega early in life e diabetes barate. What is the type it is seen? So ega recent research prakara, they are also looking looking at how certain viral infections can trigger juvenile diabetes. But I do tumba recent uh, research erodrinda. I'm not going to go into that. Instead, I will focus on the most common reason for type 1 diabetes mellitus. And uh, second PU students ke do gotide aspecto that is type 1 diabetes mellitus is going to be an autoimmune disorder. It is an autoimmune disorder. What is an autoimmune disorder? Now, generally what we find is your immune cells are going to be trained in the lymphatic system to understand the difference between your own body cells and foreign cells. We call it as self cells and non self cells. They are going to be trained in that manner in the lymphatic system. The primary lymphoid organs, uh, secondary lymphoid organs, other lymphoid tissues, wherever it is, that training happens. Here, what happens is because of some error in the training, you find that the body's cells are not able to identify the self and the non self difference. And what happens in this case is you find that the B cells, which are called as B lymphocytes, B lymphocytes manufacture antibodies which are going to destroy the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans. Matte repeat Martini. It do autoimmune disorder. It is called so type 1 diabetes mellitus because 
the B lymphocytes, they are going to identify with the help of T lymphocytes, of course, they will identify the beta cells of the islets of Langerhans as foreign cells and they will manufacture antibodies against the beta cells. And these antibodies will start destroying the beta cells. Of course, pancreas being a gland, it has got good regenerative power. So, matte adu beta cells na maad bhodu. But still, they will start getting destroyed. Right? So, this is what is going to happen. That's why it is called as autoimmune disorder. So, that means basically, now with the narrow down Mardi Vodadre, what we understand here is basically in IDDM, you find that the person is not going to make insulin or makes less insulin. So, that means type 1 diabetes mellitus, Ali, you will have hyposecretion of insulin or no secretion of insulin. No, ag bodu. Now, in this case, what is going to happen? That means to maintain the blood glucose levels and most importantly, to see that the glucose is delivered into living cells for their survival, you are going to basically have insulin has to be injected into the person. So, to see that, because Nemo, I just explained to you how without insulin, glucose will not enter. So, to make glucose enter the cells and that will also help in maintaining the blood sugar level. For that purpose, the person is going to be dependent on insulin, insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. They will have to keep taking the insulin shots. Okay, yesh togo beku yenu, that depends on the age. So, this is all, uh, you know, you, nobody can self-medicate here. It is going to be based on what the doctor is going to prescribe that is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus right okay how do we identify diabetes yargo agide adu diabetes mellitus ila diabetes insulin dependent ila type 2 diabetes you can identify it by checking the insulin levels in the body or you there is a test which is going to be done where you can detect the antibodies against insulin so yeldu methods are available to check whether it is type 1 or type 2 Okay, next to Navya the Kogana. Next, we will go to type 2 diabetes mellitus. Okay, type 2 diabetes mellitus is called as IRDM, insulin resistant diabetes mellitus. This is insulin resistant diabetes mellitus and India is the capital of type 2 diabetes mellitus. So, this is going to appear later in life. Ega, maybe around three to four decades ago, the average age when a person would get this type of diabetes mellitus used to be in the uh, 50s. But nowadays, type 2 diabetes mellitus, the average age has come down to around 25 to 30. More and more youngsters are getting this type 2 dis disease. It is not insulin, it is not juvenile, but still lifestyle in the because of very poor uh, non-healthy lifestyle, you find that students, um, young teenagers, people in their early 20s who have just started their career, etc., just started their family, they are getting into type 2 diabetes mellitus, which is insulin-resistant diabetes mellitus. So basically what is going to happen here is you find that the receptors for the insulin are seen, Glucose transporters are seen, but the receptors are unable to detect the insulin. That is, they they happen to resist the insulin. Now, tumba simple ag explain martha idini. Adhikhe nimge pathway alla irate. Okay, so basically in, in in insulin resistant diabetes mellitus, you find that the uh, the insulin receptors that are going to be seen. These insulin receptors, they fail to identify insulin. They are going to fail to identify insulin. Okay, a failure and the anbodu or resist insulin and the anbodu. So there is that resistance. So insulin idru nuwe ilde idhange. So what happens as a result when insulin is unable to bind successfully to the receptors because of this failure, you find that glucose cannot be transported into the cell. 
Okay, so for some reason you find that the cell is unable to identify and turn. These are different words that we use. It resists insulin or it does not recognize insulin or it fails to identify insulin, correct? Or fails to accept insulin. Because of this, you find that the glucose level in the blood will go up because the cells are unable to take glucose, right? That is what is seen in insulin uh, resistant diabetes mellitus. Either ke cause no, either ke cause health, autoimmunity in the okay. One of the most important and most prominent causes. Either ke cause, you know, cause is going to be basically, uh, you know, wrong lifestyle. Yao thara wrong lifestyle ir bhodo. For example, eating a lot of high glycemic food. High glycemic food and rega sick up at a junk food tinodu. Okay, foods which are rich in sugary uh, substances, you know, sugary substances throughout the day tinodu. So, wrong type of junk food erbodu, less fiber intake. So, less fiber intake, less sleep. Okay, incorrect biological clock. Yavaglu yellodu, Yavaglu madodu, and the pattern illa. So, incorrect biological clock, eating less fiber uh, food, in, uh, that is raw fruits and vegetables, na include marde erodu, eating too much of refined carbohydrates like junk food, okay, uh, less sleep, lot of stress, okay, stress with respect to everyday life, stress with respect to career or maybe education, sumne stress to golodu, right? So, all these, and of course, coupled with very less exercise. So a very sluggish life cycle. Tumba sluggish life uh, life cycle, Allah, sorry, lifestyle. So sluggish lifestyle er bodo. Okay. Hardly there is exercise, low fiber, very bad, poor sleep cycles, and eating junk food and with stress. These are considered to be some of the causative uh, factors which are helping to bring about type 2 diabetes mellitus, which means when we are aware of the factors we can actually go ahead and control them. Okay, so making sure that the makle nantare nam time ila bodhke, nam ge hell exercise madodu. I'm sure ni uh, you know, uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, so Instagram or WhatsApp badlo. If you can use that 10 minutes to do some kind of exercise, yen nim ge no fancy equipment enu bada. When walking bodhraito, mane lunchur kelsa madodraito. So some good exercise, healthy food, mane len korta rodanti nodu. Itara healthy food in the practice mad kondre, you find that type 2 diabetes can be kept away. Right? That is what you are going to find. Ivaga, once you have this, what are going to be the symptoms? Whether it is IDDM irbodu, whether it is insulin resistant irbodu, what are the symptoms of diabetes? Iga symptoms nimge acute complications ide, long term complications ben bidate. You also have uh, you know initial symptoms seen, etc. There are so many types of symptoms. We will make a list of the usual symptoms seen. So, firstly, diabetes mellitusally, you will find that the person will have, uh, you know, is going to have a lot of urination. Okay, so urination frequency and amount. So both frequency as well as amount of urine is going to definitely increase. That is first thing that is going to be seen. Because when you have glucose present in such high amounts in the bloodstream, that is going to directly contribute towards a process called as glomerular filtration. It will also affect reabsorption of water. As a result, you find that uh, you fail to reabsorb the sufficient amount of water and therefore there is going to be a lot of urination. So that is first thing that is going to be seen. Next, apart from that, you find that as soon as urination jasti atakshna, you will find that thirst is going to increase. Okay, definitely thirst will increase. Another thing that is going to happen is you find that for the body to feel hananuta madi dini, I am feeling satisfied. Anta adak the cells should have enough of ATP. They should have enough of food reserve, etc. 
Now, when the cells are unable to get the food, that is glucose, you find that there will always be a feeling of hunger because when the cells are starving for energy, there is an internal feedback mechanism and they will give a message to the hypothalamus, which is the hunger center, to say that namke glucose barthaila. How will the cells know glucose barthe erodake? Is the person starving or is the person diabetic? Anta gottira lalva cells ke? So naturally, en agatendra hypothalamus will give the person the feeling that he is hungry. So there is going to be also a feeling of hunger all the time. Right, that is what is going to happen. Next, what is going to be seen once these are the symptoms that are seen, and when the person, the cells are unable to get, suppose them the biceps, them the muscle cells, when I don't give enough of glucose, definitely they are going to be tired. So the person is going to be feeling very tired. So there is a lot of tiredness and when the cells are unable to get the, uh, you know, glucose, have anabolic activities, etc. You find that there is also a chance that the person may actually lose a lot of weight. So weight loss away, carnus bhodu. I'm just speaking about some of the symptoms, right? These are some symptoms seen. When a person experiences this weight loss, but still hunger, thirst, thirst, tumba urine. Tiredness. With this, when they go to the doctor, the doctor will ask for a blood test. Okay, a blood test early, the doctor is basically trying to find out the glucose level. There are some standard values of glucose which are going to be seen. So, you know, in families, elderly people, fasting blood sugar. So, whole night fast, one do blood test maadas ko tare. Fasting blood sugar maad bodu. Postprandial blood sugar. Andre nu in adru thin bit to two hours ad mele blood test maadas ko lodu to find out the glucose level. Adan maad bodu. Urine test for glucose. HbA1c test barate. Glyco, glyco, uh, glycochelated hemoglobin anta. So adu and barate. So HbA1c test maad bodu. There are many tests which are present. So these tests when they do there are some standard levels. Like for example, iga HbA1c test madre, you find that if the value is between 4 to 5.6 percent of HbA1c, you find that the person is considered to be normal. But suppose adu 5.7 ginta. 6.4 hatra hog bitre pre diabetes and TV. If it goes beyond 6.5, we say it is going to be diabetes. So that HbA1c test today. This is glycochelated hemoglobin test. Adu barate. Ade thara, you have, as I said, blood sugar level test. Madodu. Whether it may be fasting or it may be you know, after breakfast or after eating something, postprandial anta. Ithara bere bere test ide. So when you do such tests to find out, then the per, then the doctor will know that yes, this person is experiencing the symptoms because of diabetes. After that, you can do an insulin check on the blood. You can also do an antibody check to find out whether it is type 1 or type 2. Based on that, the doctor will recommend what the person has to do. Lifestyle changes definitely have to be done and depending on where they are, medication has to be done to maintain the blood sugar level. That is one thing and a lot of, uh, you know, care has to be taken by the person, you know, small amount of exercise, eating healthy food. These are some changes that are going to be uh, definitely that have to be incorporated right so that those are the changes which need to be made for type 1 and type 2 diabetes uh, mellitus so yauthara changes that the doctor is going to recommend what has to be done right one small point we have another 10 minutes and i thought i will share that aspect because second pu students will be definitely interested in knowing this when you look at type 1 diabetes mellitus Okay, which is going to be called as IDDM Manta Health Delva. So, idrally, uh, the person has to take insulin shots. You can't consume insulin, it's a protein, so it will get digested. So, you'll have to take insulin shots into the bloodstream. So, insulin shots, so, um, you know, um, many, many decades ago, um, uh, diabetes mellitus ke insulin beku anta gotta daga. Then, in that case, they used to extract insulin from the pancreas of pigs and pancreas of cattle. So, aduke na wo bovine insulin antivi. Bovine insulin is insulin which comes from cattle, like cows. 
ಓಕೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಬುಚರ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಪ್ಯಾಂಕ್ರಿಯಾಸ್ ಇಂದ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೋದು ಇಲ್ಲ ಪೋರ್ಸೀನ್ ಇನ್ಸುಲಿನ್ ಅಂತ ಅಂತೀವಿ ಪೋರ್ಸೀಲ್ ಇನ್ಸುಲಿನ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಪಿಗ್ಸ್ ಅದನ್ನ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡೋರು ಅಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ಲಾಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಯಾಂಕ್ರಿಯಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ಯರ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಇನ್ಸುಲಿನ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಯು ವುಡ್ ಫೈನ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ವೆರಿ ಫ್ಯೂ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಕುಡ್ ಅಫೋರ್ಡ್ ದಿ ಇನ್ಸುಲಿನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆನ್ಸಿವ್ apart from that whoever used to inject this insulin uh, you would find that it would not be as effective because though that insulin for the cow is working fine that insulin for the pig is working working fine it is not identical to human insulin so as a result its efficiency in controlling blood sugar level was very low and many people would end up having given allergic reactions against this insulin right so then in that case where do we get human insulin so human insulin manufacturer started by biotechnology field okay and we have the company it's an american company called as eli lilly this particular company you know with the team of researchers you know the information was or the knowledge of how to make human insulin in the lab uh, or in a synthetic manner was obtained and um, using uh, microbes that is e coli bacteria escherichia coli bacteria we are able to manufacture human insulin in the lab itself and uh, presently iga nim maneli illa nim friend circle ali anybody who is taking insulin remember that is exactly identical to human insulin but it is being made by bacteria yes there are some companies which are using yeast also to make human insulin so basically here that human insulin which is made what we basically do we uh, when you go to the human body you find there are three genes which are coding for insulin which are called as gene a gene b gene c right uh, each one codes for a polypeptide nimma gottirbodu human genes are all monocystronic genes alva they code for the polypeptide three polypeptides but adralli finally now mature insulin madake namge erde polypeptides beku a and b polypeptides is what is needed so eli lilly company uh, the knowledge that was obtained from the scientists was they were able to make polypeptide a separately in a batch of bacteria by inserting it into a plasmid called as puc18 and one more batch of e coli bacteria manufactured polypeptide b and once it was taken out then using sodium disulfonate uh, disulfide bridges were formed and mature insulin was obtained and that of course after formulation and putting it into a preservative and so on that is the one that is going to be sold so iga insulin kond kondre what insulin you are getting that is called as humulin humulin and the human insulin ge adu humulin antivi uh, humulin anta antivi basically human insulin which is manufactured by bacteria okay that is what we are going to have that is uh, used for iddm those who have um, insulin dependent diabetes mellitus right uh, i think that is going to be regarding our uh, diabetes mellitus i hope i have covered all the uh, parts as much as possible for your uh, topic which is diabetes thank you sir thank you any questions we can go ahead Can I ask you one question, please? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, it is said that these uh, statins, which people take for blood pressure, also yes, sir. cause uh, statins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Statins, which uh, we take for blood pressure control, or I mean, not blood pressure, but cholesterol uh, reduction exactly. of cholesterol levels. Yes. It sir. is said that uh, they also cause. Uh, they are also diabetogenic in other words diabetogenic um sir what happens Statins. is uh, yes 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 I, even i have heard about this implication but i have not learnt the pathway which is involved in this case what yeah, i yeah. Uh, basically feel is when you start to break down the cholesterol uh, you know basically statins what they are doing they are going to interfere with the uh, enzyme which is required for cholesterol manufacture 
there is an enzyme needed for cholesterol manufacture by taking you know your uh, raw materials so what happens is statins are going to act as a competitive inhibitor for these um, for the uh, enzymes so as a result you will not be in a position to make more cholesterol what happens is when there is more cholesterol that is uh, when when the raw materials are going to linger behind the raw materials which are going to be used need not always be fatty acids they can also be monosaccharides which is going to be glucose so glucose can also be uh, channeled through a bio chemical pathway in order to create acetyl coenzyme a acetyl coenzyme in the nimu fatty acid manufacture maadkondu hangene cholesterol manufacture hogbodu igen agutte when you are inhibiting the pathway leading to cholesterol manufacture you are basically helping to build up the glucose level or maintain the glucose level a bit high that is what i have heard but the full detail of the pathway i am not uh, very certain about uh, saidapur sir no no no, no, no. i am not asking for the pathway Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely, yes. That implication is there. The implication is definitely there. That statins cotre nimge the person is going to show slight hyperglycemic levels and the keli devi, which is actually true, sir. There are a lot of people take the statins, you know, these days. Yes, sir. Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's why it is a matter of concern. Yes, absolutely. Not that otherwise. Is true. Correct, correct, correct. The number of people who are being, uh, you know, uh, prescribed statins is increasing a lot, particularly in some Western countries where you find that um, atherosclerosis uh, rate sicka pate jasti ro, the obesity rate jasti ro kade, statins u tumba rampant ak prescribe akta ide. I have also heard that in some places over the counter, you can actually, uh, you know, get statins too anta keli din nano. So that is going to make the issue even more worse because more than high cholesterol level i think type 2 diabetes is going to be nimge uh, acidosis illa keto acidosis illa shuru agibitre that is going to lead to more issues neuropathy right. diabetic neuropathy these are all the additional issues which can come absolutely you're right sir yeah and another thing we hear yes sir is that the phthalates you know phthalates which are released from the plastic containers Huh. Like say you are wa even uh, drinking water bottle. Bottle, how to how to how to exposed to sunlight, heat, yes. heat. Yes, yes. Uh, they also release. And uh, these days, you know, in last uh, say two three decades, even hot sambar or a curry or packed in a very thin plastic bags, and they carry home. And uh, that also is one of the important. Uh, uh, factor may be in increasing the number of diabetics. I don't know. I don't have any data, but yes, this sir. Is years, uh, I yes, I, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, I know all this is yes against actually health. Uh, phthalates particularly, you know, adding the hot sambar into plastic containers. Illa nimdu bottles na tumba dena adane use martai rodu bottles. So, itara illa agbe train agate endre. Nangge diabetes bage nandu connection nand vodilla. Uh, sorry, but nanu phthalates bage wadhi rodu, ithara adre, more phthalates get released into food and they are also carcinogenic if phthalates. Mm -hmm. So carcinogenic mm -hmm. effect definitely is there. Yes, those are all, you know, so so, so many of these uh, conditions which are going to be actually against uh, healthy lifestyle. Correct. Uh, it's so relevant, Neva, point illi heli du Saidapur, sir. And the third point I would like your comment. Yes, sir. The last year, I received some uh, WhatsApp message or something like that, huh. where it was said that the pharmacy industry has now raised the HP A1C value to seven. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I, I wanted your comments. Ah, sir, sir, nan khandita idan modila because nanu iga uh, around uh, I think four or five months munche HB A1C modus konde. Allu we adu level seven var ghogi du nanu uh, auru nan the report allu notice agila. Maybe uh, as a research or as a trial basis they may have raised it, uh, but adu whether it that information has come down to the protocol in diagnostic labs nan gotter lela. That's very interesting. Actually, en agbitre tathara agbitre we might actually be having a lot. Of pre diabetic people who may think they are okay. Athara seven and the raise, but that is too high actually. Very high that is. Uh, that's very, uh, very disturbing news that is actually, sir. See, pharmacy industry will always set the values to a lower level. 
Correct, correct, correct. Sugar should be only so much. Yeah. Sugar level should be only so much. Yes. We always try to put it at a lower level. Yeah, so but that higher more level. Yeah. Can be sold. Correct, correct, but yeah. It's always the yeah. case, yeah. you know. So yeah, yeah. one sometimes you know one should be cautious. I think in the starting medication. Yes. yes. Even the cholesterol business. Yes. Actually, there is no correlation between atherosclerosis and cholesterol. Ah. The last 50 years, people have, are saying that. Mm. Finally, now in the USA, they have removed cholesterol mm. as a factor affecting atherosclerosis. Oh, 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 very interesting. That yes. is done actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For so okay. many years, medicines are sold. Correct. To keep correct. our cholesterol levels low. How do? How as low do, as possible. How do? How do, how do? Some of these things are also there. True, true, true. And the one should not eat this, one should not eat that, so restrictions. And of course, gluten also is attributed to cause uh, diabetes. How do, how do, how do? It does self affect rather than the other. How do, how do, how do? I, so many factors uh, which are contributing to certain conditions. How do? Correct, to, sir. That is true. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Ramesh, over in, if there are no questions, you want me to add, uh, close up uh, with the sir, comments? Thank you. Some other comments are there. Are there questions? Questions, <laughs> comments help me. Uh, Dr. Lakshmi Murthy, you are there. Lakshmi Murthy, sir. No, 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 Dr. Lakshmi I Murthy. really enjoyed. I <laughs> went back you, 50 years back to my <laughs> classroom. You know, thank I retired you, 15 you so years much. ago. Thank you, you know? thank you and, so much, uh, sir. Half of my research work was in the field of endocrinology. Oh, wonderful. Reprodu yes, reproductive yes. endocrinology. Yes, yes. And the yes. published papers also in uh, topmost endocrinology journals and all that. Yes, yes. And taught yes. comparative endocrinology for uh, master's uh, students in my university. Yes. And later half, of course, I changed my field to evolutionary biology and uh, animal behavior and so that. I didn't want to kill the animals anymore, you know. I, I happen to work from uh, fish to hamsters. Okay, okay. Actually, and, and I stopped doing that. So I, after a long time, I heard a very good lecture, very simple, anybody could follow, and comprehensive at the same time. Thank because you. I know the, uh, something about insulin. Yeah. Okay, not that thing. And we, we used to teach also these things and Margaret Sanger and other things, all those who discussed all those yes, things. Yes, yes, yes. We used to do that. And then uh, as a person from the, basically from the field of endocrinology, we keep the thing. But of course, now I'm outdated. That is a different issue. But it was a wonderful talk. Thank I really you, enjoyed it. This is Thank the kind you, of talk we really need, you know, for uh, students and uh, for, for people outside the field. I would say this. For a hardcore endocrinologist, this may appear very elementary. Basic, how do I? For all others, yes. and uh, even for a person who knows something about this, I felt very, very happy. You covered Thank you. all crucial things, everything, up to the latest you have covered. I yes. used to teach about glucose permeas, but I did not know about GLUT4, uh, for example. Yes. In the membrane yes. Are permeas, but how yeah, how how it affects how all that. Then molecular biology also I used to teach. But the GLUT4, I did not know. At that time, uh, it, nearly 15, 20 years back, there was just a glucose permease or glucose, how do, how do. glucose transporter protein, but whatever how you do, call, that is what it was. Now so, I learned GLUT4 also. So it was very nice. Uh, I really enjoyed Ramesh. Uh, compliments to you also for uh, arranging such a wonderful uh, uh, lecture. And uh, the message should be to for the students is, that uh, they must control, uh, like she said, uh, the lifestyle, basic minimum exercise, and avoid junk food. In America, in some of the states, uh, when children become obese, which is very common there, uh, parents are punished by court. Parents, parents are held responsible. Correct. Children yes. becoming yes. obese. Yes, yes. Junk yes. food is a source of becoming obese and now in india also we have a lot of uh, such foods are uh, easily available. available yes and uh, in the evening you go to any street in the, any town uh, all the students gather to eat junk food and now we have even in the Hubli darwa 
we have KFC, we have uh, uh, Pizza Hut, Domino's, these, that, uh, all these, uh, this, this, the big, funny, whatever these are. Yeah. They should really control this yes. and educate them. And the second thing is, we should be also careful in uh, using the bottled water. Yes. Bottle, if they are not exposed to sunlight, it is fine. Yeah. Otherwise, most of these water bottles are of cheap quality. Cheap quality. By the way, they are imported from China. Then I don't have to say further. You you can understand. So if at home also we have to have real good quality water bottles, not okay. as, uh, what is available as a water bottle. Good People should be careful, and uh, we should avoid. The same thing applies for other drinks also, which are in a plastic bottle. Correct. And people should avoid carrying carry home food, hot food in Correct. plastic bags and all. This, yes. We have to tell people. You know, that yes. is terrible. I've seen hot sambar with idli. Yes. They are taken in uh, plastic bags. Correct. And then all pallets will release into that. Yeah, then, absolutely. What do you expect? Yes. So over a period of already we are capital of diabetes. Yes. In the world. Yes. And that will become more. Yes. It is both hereditary as well as acquired. Yes. And uh, hereditary is less, but acquired is more. Yes. That is our uh, trouble, like our eyesight also. Because we read small font size, we invite the spectacles. You know, right from childhood. Watching yes. TV right from childhood for so long, we invite the spectacles. This yeah. is acquired. But some people have hereditary also. How do? That is also there. Both are there. So one has to be there. Our children need to be educated on these things so that uh, it's a part of management of this problem. Correct. What else? There's nothing else. Yes. So once again, thank you. I thank really you, enjoyed your you, talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank my you. student days and teaching days and all that. Means a lot, sir. Means a lot, thank sir. Thank you so much. Yes, thank sir. You. Now, no MSc botany Martha Daga Nivali Zoology Departmental. Yeah, Nano ninety five pass out are there, sir. Ninety five, only botany Matilda, but yes, the endocrinology and I'm not a Kerala. MSc botany, but in the MSc Zoology of Thank you, that sir. is amazing. Carol so Delimatra, yes, sir. Oh, great. Then you might have seen me also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. very nice. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much Thank for you. your presence, sir, and for your good comments about uh, Madam's talk. Madam, uh, Madam, in fact, sir, is the body of uh, Sarup Bhatnagar Award, which is highest. In yes, yes, in yes, I know, sir, I know. So much of respect for sir, really, really. He is one of the esteemed member of KSPA and the yes. great academicians. Um, academician, sir, has published a book on uh, education recently. He also, he also has brought out a policy paper on science education for KSTA. He's a great uh, scholar. Sir, on Definitely. behalf of all of us, we are very grateful to you, thankful to you for your presence and uh, comments. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Sir, your talk was really amazing. I thank you, thank you, sir. 25 years back about uh, diabetes and all. In fact, I am a fisheries. Uh, scientist now 25 26 years ago i had studied i had forgotten now it's a class to recap the old uh, memories and thank you thank you sir highly benefited by your talk uh, thank you the only problem is students don't ask questions because yeah they think yeah. They are I urge yeah. all of them to if they have any questions Related to diabetes, they always can mail us indirectly. Uh, we'll be mailing it to Madam. She will be answering your questions. Definitely, definitely. Anytime. Okay. Yes, sir. Any yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Right to us. Thank you. Madam, Namaste. Thank you. Madam, we are very grateful to you. you are thank part. you, sir. Excellent. Yes. Thank, thank you. Once again, thank you. I thank all the participants from Monday onwards. Once again, new topic, new resource expert in Kolkata. Mostly on Monday, uh, Professor MJ Sundaram, former uh, professor of uh, Vijaya College, will be delivering a talk on evolution, sir. Yeah, so I request all of you to kindly uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so sir. much. Thank you.